Hi guys, Dr. Hampton here with Dr. Jason Fung, who is a Canadian nephrologist and world leading expert on intermittent fasting, low carb, and the treatment of metabolic disease. He has written multiple best selling books and co founded the Intensive Dietary Management Program. So, Dr. Fung, uh, would you share with my audience how our brain can survive while we're fasting? Yeah, this is a huge mis- misconception because it's been out there for so long that, uh, and you hear this all the time, that the brain needs 130 grams of glucose to survive. Therefore, you must eat 130 grams of carbohydrates, which is actually not true at all. So, uh, you know, let's start with uh, does the brain survive after fasting? And obviously, the answer is yes, because really, even as physicians, we tell people to fast all the time. Right. So if you have to do a colonoscopy preparation, you need to fast. If you're going for surgery, you need to fast. After surgery, you need to fast. For fasting blood work, you need to fast. So it's pretty obvious. And, you know, you can go through and there's, you know, thousands of people who fast for religious purposes. There's many, many thousands of people who have fasted over the years and clearly have not died after 24 year, hours of not eating, for example. And the old, the old studies involved like 30 or 60 days of fasting. So they were like heavy core, hardcore, I should say. So the, the point is that the brain has clearly evolved ways to cope while fasting. And the point is that our body actually carries a store of energy. That's literally what body fat is. <laughs> Uh, that is the reason we carry body fat so that if we're cavemen and cave women and there's nothing to eat because you weren't able to find food you will still survive otherwise you and i would not have been here it would be you know planet of the apes or something like that right? right so when you don't eat your brain uses glucose and that's where this sort of myth sort of comes from because the brain has no ability to switch over to triglycerides. That is, triglycerides are those molecules of fat. So fat is something uh, called triglycerides. There's, you can break those uh, uh, the triglycerides into molecules of sort of glycerol plus uh, fatty acids. And most of your organs will actually use fatty acids just fine. So your liver, your kidney, your muscles. So if your muscles have no glucose, you will use fatty acids. So you'll burn fat basically, but you can't do that in the brain. The brain has to use glucose. So people say, well, you're going to die if you don't uh, eat for 24 hours. That's not true because what happens is that the fatty acids go to the liver. The liver produces ketones, which are able to cross over into the blood brain barrier and therefore feed the energy needs of the brain. In fact, during fasting, mammals, there's only two organs that do not shrink during fasting, like prolonged fasting, and that's the testes and the brain, because those are the two most protected organs uh, when we're starving. When we are literally starving, our body has prioritized those two organs, so reproduction and survival, which requires our brain because we certainly don't have bigger claws or sharper teeth than most animals. So that's what happens during fasting, and this is completely normal. So you're basically fueling most of your body with fat, that is fatty acids. Those The brain is fueled mostly by ketones, which are produced from those fatty acids in the liver. And there is still a small requirement for glucose, um, and that is provided by the glycerol backbone of the triglycerides, but that doesn't provide everything. There is also a little bit of gluconeogenesis. Um, but you really, people have survived years. If you think about how long people can survive, the world record for fasting is 382 days, which is a long time. This was medically supervised and he did fine. His brain didn't shrink. So, uh, you know, this, this entire myth about how the brain being somehow affected during, uh, fasting is completely not true. In fact, if you look at studies of mental abilities they actually go up significantly during fasting Mm -hmm. so the brain actually seems to be working better than uh before uh in terms of its uh, computational abilities memory and all kinds of things there's all these uh, people looking at it in terms of prevention of alzheimer's dementia and so on so really the opposite of what people are thinking but yes we are able to survive, you know, without eating for a period of time. 
because of the way we've evolved, which is our stores of glucose and our stores of body fat. We're basically living off of our body fat, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's no different than if you store food in your freezer and you have so much food in your freezer that you can't even close the lid. You could not go to the store for a little while and just right. eat the food in your freezer. Like, it's okay. Same in our body. We've stored, for most of us, weeks or months of food in our storage. So let's use it because that's what's making us sick right now. Nice. Uh, I was laughing as I heard you talk about the brain and the, and the testicles because uh, I definitely need my brain. We're both on our lunch break and we need to go see patients and do our clinical work. But I'm not making any more babies, so I could care less about it. <laughs> but it's nice to know for those who are still, uh, you know, making babies, uh, it's nice to know that we're preserving that. So thank you for that insight. So you definitely taught me something today, so I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, guys, uh, we have a little clarity now that our body can sustain itself when we're not eating. So I hope this information was helpful. And if it was, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. And as usual, until we meet again, I want you to be safe, be well, and to continue to protect your nest.